Hello and welcome to Holy Wars, a podcast about religion, coexistence, and the people trying to figure it out. I'm your host, Jeremy McClellan, and my guest today is my good friend Omar Regan, a black Muslim comedian from Detroit, Michigan. Omar and I have spent the last two months touring together, doing shows to raise money for Helping Hands work in Pakistan. We've done about 16 shows all over the country, and we sat down and we talked about uh, just our time together and different conversations that we had had. We talked about how comedy can bring religions together, our $300 speeding ticket in New York, whether Jewel is going to grow up and become a racist, missing our kids when we're on tour, why we hate audience members filming during comedy shows, how to handle hecklers, and why comedians love watching other comedians mess up. We'll talk about it a lot more, too. It's really You're really going to enjoy it. And if you enjoy the podcast, please subscribe, rate it five stars on iTunes, share it with your friends, and donate to the Patreon. Uh, thank you, and welcome to Holy Wars. All right, Omar, welcome to the podcast. Hey, thank you for having me, Jeremy. <laughs> Omar, you and I, we've done how many shows together now? You know... Like, you, on this tour. On this tour, I think we own, like... Feels like we have 17 total. 17 total, and we've uh, got three, four... So we've done 13? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And 13 or 14. But this is the first weekend that's that we've it. traveled together. That's true. Because <laughs> this is the first... Helping Hand, we've been doing this, this uh, tour with Helping Hand... Great organization. Yes. Right? Yes. <laughs> they, they do tons of good work. All this stuff that we're doing is to raise money for the work they're doing in Pakistan. Right. And, however, the one problem they have is they don't schedule the events close to each other. Mm-hmm. Right? So you'll have... And that's just because of when people are available. Right. right? So, But we'll have weekends where we're like in Texas on Friday... And then Saturday is California. Yes. And then Sunday is Maine. <laughs> this might have been the best weekend this so far. This is the far. best weekend so far because yeah. it's all been in the Northeast. Right. And so what I did is I got a round trip ticket to the first show in Rochester, New York, and then rented a car. <laughs> and they gave me a Dodge Charger. Yeah. <laughs> and then we drove after that to Connecticut, which was yeah. six hours, and I got a $300 speeding ticket. But it wasn't your fault because the Charger is a sports car, man. It's, <laughs> yeah. it's, super it's not my fault, charger. right? So, yeah, it's, it is a sports car. And I'm, I'm a grandmother driver. I drive like a granny. So I drive five under all the time. Yeah. But that's because all the cars I drive are not very good. Mm. And so when I drive, like I learned how to drive on a 1976 diesel Mercedes, where if you went over <laughs> 50 miles an hour... You felt like the car was going to fall apart. <laughs> right. So I, that's how I learned shaking how to drive. Yeah, it's shaking. And yeah. so if I go 85 miles an hour in my base model Saturn Rogue right. back home, uh, it feels like it's going to fall apart. But if I drive on a Dodge Charger... We didn't even feel it. We didn't even feel it. It's just, feel it drives like a dream. And this this podcast should be sponsored by Dodge Charger. <laughs> right. Right, because I'm talking it up so much. Oh. But, or, or maybe not. Or, or the state troopers. Yeah, or the state troopers like because that, they, <laughs> yeah, because we did not, it was such a good drive. Yeah, he that interrupted we did not our conversation. Know, we did not, yeah, he interrupted our conversation. Yeah. We were having a good conversation. Yep. And we were saying earlier that we should have just recorded that conversation that we had in the car. I know. It was all about religion and coexistence and our histories. Yeah. With women and, and all this great stuff, our and so lives. our love lives, and so we need to we need to get in touch with the FBI. That's what we said yeah. because they record everything we do. That's true, and so we need to get their recordings and have that be like bonus episodes of this podcast. And we'll be respectful and put on there <clears throat> recorded by the FBI. Record, but we'll give them credit. Yeah, and we'll give them a, a percentage yeah. of of what we do. We, and really, we want to give them that. Well, they have, they have, that is true. We already like, I mean, this is tax season. They already take a big percentage of what, of what we do. That's true. We're independent. We pay them to record us. Well, well, they didn't get permission. They didn't get permission. Right. But they break a lot of copyrights, but we needed, we needed needed the exposure. Right. (laughs) We're doing it. We're doing the FBI surveillance for the exposure. (laughs) Right. We needed that. (laughs) (laughs) The market. Yeah. Market the wire. (laughs) But, but tonight we were in. I want to say Boston. We were not in Boston. Lawrence. We were in Lawrence, Massachusetts. Yeah. And see, all these shows, they're like, they're like, it's going to be in Boston. Yeah. And then you're like, is it going to be in Boston? <laughs> or 
what what they're really saying is it's going to be in whatever city the Muslims live in near the main city. Yeah, in some suburb. In some <laughs> suburb of like wh- wherever the first uncle is Des- who came there. Decided. Decided to go there. We are going to stay here. <laughs> right. right. <laughs> Called yeah. all of his friends. Yeah, the first uncle moved there and then he and then everybody came there. Yeah, it's true. And so we were in Lawrence, Massachusetts, which somebody told us tonight was 80% immigrant. And I don't know if that's true. I feel like that's you could fact check that, and it's not true. And eighty percent's a lot. To be fair, they could tell us almost anything because we yeah. we don't get the chance to see the city. Right. <laughs> we, that's true. We and we take sleep during the day. <clears throat> that's true. Get back up. We we arrive the day of, then we go to sleep, take a day. That's one I think bad thing about um, doing. I won't say a bad thing about doing comedy, but it's a bad thing about traveling so much and traveling so quickly. Yeah. Where. It's not like we're in Boston for the weekend and we're doing a show every night or something. Right. It's we're in Boston and then Connecticut, you know. And it's also a bad thing I've noticed is that, like, if I get sucked into my phone. Yeah, yeah. (laughs) Then I don't remember the weekend at all. Mm. Because, like, my wife, Stephanie, she'll be like, what was Seattle like? Did you have a good time in Seattle? And I'm like, it was terrible. I got into a fight on Twitter. You know? <laughs> like, there's not even... She was like, what did that have to do with Seattle? Yeah, what did that have to do with like, Seattle? That's like, how was, how was the weather? Seattle. I don't even know. I don't even remember what the weather was like in Seattle. Yeah. I got a fight on Twitter. And then she's like, well, okay, well, after Seattle, you went to Houston. How was Houston? And I'll be like, Houston was great. Like, I got, I went viral. Right. You know? <laughs> I did really course, well. Yeah. I got a lot got of good a lot responses. Of love got a lot of love in Houston on Twitter. <laughs> On Facebook, people send me a lot of good, encouraging messages, <laughs> and I love Houston. I need to go back soon. You know? Yeah, yeah. It's, and things is happening. Things is happening there, <laughs> and but that's the bad thing I think about getting sucked into your phone. I agree. Uh, I've been working on that too myself, man. Yeah, I really. I've been working hard on that. Put my phone in the closet and walking away from it. Yeah. It feels like what you said. Like it feels good, you know. Yeah. But I was talking about you too, and I went home. So yeah. I was like, yeah. Because I'm preaching to people yeah. now. <laughs> hey man, it's like working. if I if I talk to anybody now, I talk about resistance. Yes. You yes. know, I talk about resistance, which is this idea from Stephen Pressfield's book, The War of Art. See, you got me on this book, on man. On this resistance. First, yeah. you started me with that. You gave me The War of Art. Uh huh. And then I was just, I read it. Not The Art of War, but The War of Art. That's right. Right. Make that clear. Not Sun Tzu, (laughs) but it's it's named after that, Stephen Pressfield. Stephen Pressfield. And the whole idea is that you have this, like, desire for self-sabotage in you. Right. You know, you have have this war where there's, like, this thing in you that needs to develop and be your full self. Right. Right. And then you have this other shadow that's trying to keep you... From, from doing that. Being yourself. From being so resistance with a capital R is anything that prevents you from doing the work. Right. So anything that keeps you from writing. Even like what, we, what we, you reminded me today is that even the research that you say you're doing mm-hmm. for a project could turn into resistance. Yeah, because you're like, okay, well, I'm going to be writing this thing. Right. You know, I'm going to write a book about something. Right. You know, and so, well, I need to do some research on that. And so then you do research, and then it's a year later, and you haven't written anything about right. it. And you're like, yeah, but I just need to do some more research. <laughs> right. And so his book, Do the Work, he's like, you read three books, and that's it. That's it. That's all the research you're allowed do to work. do. Go you know? do the work. Yeah. yeah. And it's, it's so hard, because you can come up with any kind of excuse to not do it. And it always makes not do sense. It. Yeah. Like, I mean, addiction is anything. The thing with me that I struggle with is one of the things he says is any low effort any low quality effort to bring attention to yourself. Hmm. So anything you do, any like dumb thing you post that, that will go viral. <laughs> that's not a thing. <laughs> I mean, there's things you post that like, right. you know, you, like you see a funny picture. Right. So you take that and you put it on your page yes. and yes. that goes viral. It's not your work. Right. Right. But you feel good. That it went viral. That it went viral. Yeah. And you're like, man, people love me. No, they don't. They love the person who's, who who's, that, whose cartoon you clipped but out. anything that will, will enhance your, what you, your, your purpose and your, yeah. your gift. And all, you know, all of that takes hard that, work. Yeah. You and you work. might... I mean, that's the thing. Is that like... On two extremes, there, there's, there's times that you post something or times that you tell a joke. Yeah. And it's very low effort. 
mm-hmm. right? It's it's something I mean, we, we like comics. We would call it hack, mm-hmm. right? Hack joke that you tell, and then it crushes, and you're like, oh, like that is not. It doesn't really feel good, right? You know, it's a low effort joke. Yeah, uh, you tell it and it does well, or it goes viral, and you're like, you know what? It wasn't me though. That wasn't like from my soul. From my, yeah, it was just a trick I did. Like I didn't. I didn't create that put the thought into that yeah. and create anyone could have written it right right it could have been written by anybody yeah it's like a late night joke yeah you know you write a late night joke anyone could write it it's not a big deal yeah you know and then on the other on the other side there's things you put your heart and soul into yeah that you work really hard on and nobody likes it nobody likes it and it's like oh like, and it just kills you it does it hurt and <laughs> the the thing that I mean the best thing is when you put your heart and soul into a joke and it crushes. It's true. That's and that's the that's what you're chasing all yeah, the time. All the time. That thing. But the one thing that we know is if we don't keep doing what we love, it's like if we don't keep doing that joke and making it better, then we fail for the resistance. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Cause I, I tend to do that is where I'll make a joke okay. Yeah. And then I'll be like, that's good enough. Yeah. And I won't keep working at it. <laughs> right. You know? <laughs> There's jokes I'm like, ah, it's finished enough. Yeah. It gets, a, it gets a laugh. So I'm not going to keep going back at it. That's what I do. Yeah. I, I mean, I'm, I feel you. I do the same. <laughs> Be like, yeah, okay, I'm going there. and Let me just keep moving on. Yeah. Do another topic. The worst thing, too, even for comics, especially like when we're on these kind of tours, is that sometimes I get tired of hearing my jokes. Yeah. <laughs> right. Like, I, I'm like, I heard this joke. Mm-hmm. Right. But it, and it sucks. Yeah, keep going. Yeah, but it does help <laughs> that if I go to a place that I haven't gone, I right. do get excited. Yeah. Because I'm like, wait, they haven't heard it. Uh-huh. But if I go to a place that I have been, then I'd be all in my head. Yeah, right. I'm up on the stage. Well, yeah, because you can do it on autopilot. Right. There's jokes where you can just press play and you can do them. Yeah. But I think the audience knows. Mm. I think they can feel it. Yeah. When... Like tonight. <laughs> so tonight we were in Lawrence, Massachusetts uh, at this fundraiser. And uh, downstairs, underneath us. Man. And first of all, the event was at an Elks Lodge, which right. I had to learn was not the Freemasons. I thought the Elks Lodge was the Freemasons. Apparently it's not. I don't know. I didn't either. Because I get tensed up with the Freemasons. Okay. I'm like, I'm, I'm going to take them on the Illuminati. Right. Apparently right. the Elks Lodge is not the Illuminati. <laughs> it's, just, it's just people having fun. Is it the people, the kids drinking, they say. Yeah, kids drinking. After 11. Right. Elks Lodge. Yeah. So. Which we, apparently it was a baby shower. Yeah, it was a baby shower downstairs, but it was a, a Latino baby shower. And it was like the loudest music. Maybe it wasn't a baby shower. Maybe it was a quinceanera then. It could have been a quinceanera. Yeah. Yeah. So downstairs, the loudest music possible. And upstairs, us <laughs> and a bunch of people who can feel the beats in our feet. <laughs> yes. It's so loud. And see the glass, the water glasses. The shaking. water glasses are shaking like Jurassic Park. Yep. Like it's the brilliant. dinosaur, like the T-Rex is coming. Yes, yes. And, <laughs> and, and, and the people t- trying to speak before us right. did not address it. And that was, that was a mistake. Yeah. Because you have to address it. You have to. If you don't address something like that, just like with hecklers, yes. If somebody heckles during a show, you have to stop and address it. You got to address it. If you it. keep going, yes. Then everyone knows that what you're doing is scripted. Because sure. part of the illusion of comedy is that you don't is it right? Is that you're making it up as you go <laughs> right. along. Now you're not. <laughs> but but you pretend like you are. Right. And there's that illusion and people know in their heads that it's scripted. Right. But they don't feel it. That's but if, true. If, if but if there's music going on downstairs and everybody's doo, 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 while you're performing and you barrel through it. Right. You pretend everybody knows yeah. that it's scripted and it takes people out of it and they hate it. It's true. So we had to we had to address we it. We had to we had to address it tonight. Yeah. Yeah. And <laughs> the lady told me afterwards, you know what she said? What she, she said, said uh she says, yeah, you know, you're talking about the music. I forgot all about the music. You oh, guys that's good. were so funny. You were so funny. Yeah, I forgot I about like, the music. Oh, that's, that's good. good. Oh, yeah. 
That's good. Because I didn't good. forget about the Yeah, we didn't forget about it. <laughs> I was, we like, was, I was, I can't it was even in my hear head the, laugh. the whole time. I can't hear the laugh. I was like, yeah, I felt the rocking. I kept addressing it. I was off, to be honest with you tonight. Yeah. I was. Me too. I was off, man. I kept doing jokes. I didn't have as much fun. Some parts I had fun. Yeah. You know, <laughs> but. I kept almost calling back to jokes that I hadn't done. Yeah. Like, like where you have a joke at the beginning and then you call back to it later on. Yeah. But I kept like almost calling back to jokes I, I, oh, didn't, I didn't do. do that yet. And it was, yeah, it was, I was keeping, <laughs> trying to keep track and I just got all confused. And they had an interesting look on their faces. They did. I think it was all of the above because they felt the music but trying to drown it out mm-hmm. at the same time and pay attention to us and yeah. ignore the music. They were like, we paid to see them. Why is there music going yeah. on downstairs? Yeah. Yeah. Bad time. And they had just had food. Hopefully, Helping Hand don't get that venue anymore. They had had biryani. Yep. Well, you could <laughs> request the venue and be like, please no... <laughs> Elk <Elksla. laughs> Please no Latino <laughs> dance Casey party downstairs. Baby shower. Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, that was... But, but, like, most of these events... I think Houston was the event that was... Houston was... Fun. Houston was crazy. Yeah, it was, man, it was a lot of fun. It Houston was, was tons of people. They were so eager and excited. Excited to be ready there. Ready to have fun. Ready too. to have fun. Yeah. And the uh, Consul General of for, for, of, like, for, for Pakistan, Pakistan was yeah. there. Yeah. And I met him, and then he was like, How's Jewel? And wow. I was like, How does the Consul General <laughs> of Pakistan know my daughter's name? Oh, that is amazing. It's crazy. Yeah. And I feel like I got to... It's, it's going to be weird if she grows up and, and like, hates Muslims. <laughs> right? right yeah. Like, she gets she, she grows up and becomes really Islamophobic. She joins some alt-right group yeah. or whatever. They and she, and she's up there. She's up there, like, spouting a bunch of hate. And, yeah. But a bunch of Pakistanis come to see her because they're like, we love you, Jewel. <laughs> She's like, oh, but I don't love you. you know? <laughs> Leave me alone. <laughs> <laughs> Your love is not real. Yeah. <laughs> We've always loved you, too. Yeah. That's what, yeah. I mean, it's it's cool. I am I miss my kid when I'm on these. Like, you have six kids. Right? Yeah, man. And you miss them when you're on these tours? I do. I FaceTime today. Yeah. So FaceTime them earlier. And they, they, they have the number one question, which you'll get this from Jewel when mm-hmm. she's talking to Mom a minute. When are you coming back? Yeah. Yeah. It hurts. So Jewel just now, she is just now able to know that I'm in the... Phone. The phone. Uh, like when we FaceTime. Yes. Right. So we went through a thing where she had no idea what it was. She thought it was like a picture of me or something, mm. you know, and or didn't even recognize that it was me or something, you know. Right. And then she went through a phase where she was freaked out by it like a few times. Yeah. Get him like, out of there. Yeah. Who is that? Yeah. <laughs> And now she's like kissing the screen, Aww. and but then she'll like take the phone and crawl away with it, and like hit it and stuff and like hang up Where on me. Where is he? Where's Daddy? Yeah, at? hang up on me. Like that's and then she'll get mad. That, that don't like, feel good though. It doesn't. In a way. That's like I'm not in there. I'm right here. That's the reason why. You know what? We have to go up on our prices. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> they need to pay for the pain. Yeah, the and pain suffering. and suffering of watching our kids, <laughs> right. our uh, kids, do uh, that. leaving our children, right, right. <laughs> our loved ones behind. That's right. To come build their cause, there's a fee, an additional fee, exactly. <laughs> that we need to charge. And right, <laughs> that's true. Yeah. You should just take a video of that, of of like Jewel trying to get at it because they and always then post it on on Facebook and be like. Donate to this GoFundMe right. for my mental health. <laughs> right. They always try to, you know, get the discount. You know, oh, yeah. and they always get to do, want to go after the discount and be like, "Listen, this is the reason why we can't give discount." Look yeah. at my kid. Look at my kid. Look at these tears. We should have infomercials for mm. us. <laughs> That's true. Pictures of our kids playing with the phone, and we're like, right. "This little girl." Like in his like the in the arms of the angel, like in the background. <laughs> yes, that's a good idea. And with with the kids, and they're like, for just the cost of a cup of coffee a day, <laughs> right? You can <laughs> you can ease Jeremy's pain and suffering. Yes, that's you can true. help Jeremy that's upgrade true. his data plan. Right. 
so that it's a better picture or something. <laughs> yeah. Right. All of the above. You know? Everything. So that I can bring my child along and mm-hmm. get an additional yeah, right. suite right? everywhere I go. Right. I can afford the extra plane ticket. Mm-hmm. <laughs> right. Two plane tickets yeah. because the mom has to come because I can't perform when yeah. she's on the stage. Right. But at least I'm always you in the You could wear like a baby Bjorn. <laughs> That's true. I, mean, I could. Comedy with the baby. Comedy with the baby. Yeah. But my baby is big. <laughs> we did that um, in uh, in the UK because my wife and baby joined me on the Human Appeal Tour. Nice. And we would sometimes like bring Jewel out on stage. Right. Like I'd go off stage, good night everybody, you know. And then I'd put on the baby Bjorn and then Jewel because she stayed up all, all, every night. Wow. And she was so excited to be around and she loved everybody. Yeah. And then we came out back on stage with Jewel and people just went wild. Nice. You know. And and Jewel didn't get upset. I thought maybe she'd freak out and then yeah. it would be like, oh, no, no, that's not good anymore. She knows. Like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you did say that, though. She's, she's like a drama person. queen. Yeah. yeah she's, <laughs> she's a people person. She's really extroverted. Yeah. And... Uh, my wife is really extroverted. Nice. And I'm not. Right. <laughs> That's the balance thing. Yeah. I talk, like, I'll talk to you for seven hours in the car. Right. You know, and not get tired from it. No. But. Thank you. When I'm, yeah. No. Well, I, yeah. I listen to you. Yeah. <laughs> and then we're, we'll be, but then we'll be at, like, an event, and people are just, everybody's saying the same thing. And they're coming up, and they want to take pictures. Yeah. And after like an hour or two hours of that, I'm like, all right. You're good though. You're really good I'm, because I, I can you, pretend. You say, you're like, I mean, I, I'm glad that you handled it. I followed your lead because they, but they come up, I can't say no. They, well, can we take a picture right quick? Like, they asked you oh, first. Oh, I say no. Yeah, and you say, can we do it after? Yeah, I say, can we do it after because otherwise a line will start. And they like it. They, like, they okay, respect it. I got yeah. It. I I I I I never I don't be saying no. <laughs> one thing they one thing that I, I've been getting really frustrated with is people filming during shows. I don't Why know. do people? If you're listening to this, yeah, never film during a comedy show. Never take out your phone right. and film during a comedy show. I mean, don't do it in a concert either, but especially during a comedy show. True. For and there's a number of reasons. Number one, we hate it. Right. That's true. Right. We hate it. And we want to be able to say whatever we want That's and not, right. and just be, be be present, right? But the main thing is that people who film don't laugh because they That's don't true. want their laugh to be recorded in the film. That's true. So they're sitting there looking at their film at their phone, just just staring at it, right? And they're not laughing because they well, first of all, they're not paying attention, right? They're not actually present in the moment where you can take them by surprise with with jokes, right? But they're like, they don't want their laugh to be... They want to get this footage. Recorded. They want to get that footage. And people around them are self-conscious, too, about right. their laugh. And what are, they, what are you going to and what are you gonna do with the footage? What are they going to do with it? If they put it on YouTube, I... I it I, hurts. It hurts us. Right, it's true. And I get them to take it down. Yep. Be- like, and because there's... I just tell my manager, like, look at this. And he's like, I'm on it. I'm on it. Take and it so down. Take they, it down. They get a takedown. And it, it disrupts the like if we're working our jokes out mm-hmm. and we may not have properly got them the way we right. really want them, but we're testing it. Mm-hmm. And then you guys are sharing it with your friends and your families. Then you're studying. So <clears throat> what it does is it hurts our Netflix special. It does because like if we if we do a special or even just like we have a finished joke. Right. Like right now, my finished my like really finished joke is the joke about. Um, Churches that get turned into mosques, right? And then Christians move in next door, start going, and never realize it's a church, or right. never realize it's a mosque. And it's it's like it's got a ton of jokes in it, and that I think is pretty much finished. But months ago, yeah. when I was doing that joke, it wasn't finished. That's true. And if somebody films it and puts it on Twitter, it hurts. It goes viral or something, and people hear that that first draft. Yeah. And then I do it on. Netflix or something they're like that's not the version I heard you right. know and you know not to be like too obvious but some of the stories we tell are exaggerated <laughs> you know yeah, right like right. you tell a story right and, and somebody films it right. and they put it on Twitter and then it kills it for everybody special else comes too. out yeah right yeah it kills it for everybody else because it ruins the suspense but also 
like if we do it on a special and we've added stuff to it, <laughs> you know, like lies, right? Right. <laughs> Or we've taken two stories and combined them. Right. Then people are like, uh-uh, that's not how it went. And you'd be like, nobody asked. You wasn't there. Yeah. <laughs> but the man, no, I just forgot that part. Right. I just remembered later that that part <laughs> happened. No, but it really does hurt us, and it hurts shows. So no, stop doing true. it. Stop, stop doing it. Please. Stop it. Stop doing it. I, there was this one guy, this Pakistani uncle. It was at, I think it was Gotham Comedy Club in New York City. And he was filming... Yeah. during it and I knew he was filming because the whole audience is dark except for his face because <laughs> the glow lit, of the, the glow the glow is filming his face or is, is lit, has lit up his face so it's a sea of black and then one stupid dude <laughs> you know <laughs> right. and he's filming and I stopped the show and I'm like why are you filming and he's like I'm not recording and I'm like you're not you, you, what are you doing he's like live stream <laughs> Oh, wow. <laughs> he was live streaming the show. Even worse. Yeah. And so I was like, "What? who are you live streaming to? And he was like, my family. And I was like, why didn't your family come to the show? And he said, they're in Lahore. Oh, they're in Pakistan. They're in Pakistan. So he had family in Pakistan that I guess were watching me perform. And I was like, did they buy, did you buy tickets for them? Yeah. Like, did you, like, I'll give them a, 500 rupees. 500 rupees. <laughs> then, then you can live stream it. But I was. Hey, that's funny. Yeah. That's I was not really happy. Funny. I was not happy no, with him. But that's funny. That is funny. I should put that in. <laughs> yeah, you gotta put that in. But I'll add lies to it later. Because so. when you, t- you know how when you tell them about <clears throat> taking off their phones. I could just tell that story. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And then I could be like, and it was really. At that point, it, it meant a lot to me, you know, because I was like, oh, that's really sweet. Yeah. Like with the beauty of technology, mm. his family in Lahore get to watch him get kicked out of a comedy show. <laughs> <laughs> and it was really yeah. beautiful. Good you job. Know? It's a really, yeah. By me, Jeremy right, McClellan. Right, by me, Jeremy McClellan. It's really <laughs> Security. Nice. Security, get him. Yeah. I keep forgetting, too, that uh, to have the guy who introduces us. To say, ch- not to say not to film. Yeah. Like I forget that, forgot to have the team say that every time. Because then they're the bad guy, and we're not. Right. You know. Yeah. What is uh? I think it's Dave Chappelle, who has bags now. Yeah, they got bags. <clears throat> Dave Chappelle, Kevin Hart, yeah. all of them have. You know, Chris Tucker, um, they all. You put your phone in the back. Is it like on the back of the seats? No, it was when you're going in. Yeah, they make you put your phone in the bag and then they close it, snap it. So even when I attended Mom's and then you take special, it with you, yeah, you keep the. Uh, but you can't unlock it. You can't unlock it. It's like one of those things that's on the oh. clothes. It's a magnet that can unlock it. Okay. So when you come out, they the, the people with the magnets just stand with two magnets and you just tap the thing and the bag opens and then you drop. We should the do bag that. We should. Do How that. much does that cost? It would you probably know, be the entire budget. <laughs> <laughs> it would be a hundred thousand dollars or something like that because maybe you got to get new magnets every show. Mm-hmm. <laughs> maybe that's a good idea. It is a good idea. We need to do it because I feel bad. We could put that in a price. Yeah, because I'm not like an aggressive. I've I've thought about this with how to handle hecklers, where sometimes people heckle mm. and they're and, and you want to destroy them. Right. Right. Like you like something in you comes out. Yes. And you're like, I want to just destroy this person. Yes. Right. But your set is nice and pleasant. Yeah. And so you can't do it because it would it would ruin your your brand. Right. To be really mean. Now, if you have a mean brand, you can do it. You can do it. You know, but I feel like for me, like I'm nice on stage. But this audience, too. Yeah. The audience. I believe, like what you said, they would turn on us mm-hmm. if we were just really tearing. Like some people would laugh, like ha ha. Yeah. But depend on how the heck. If he just says, "Okay, I'm I'm bow out," yeah, you got, you got me. If he does that, it is fine. Right. But if he keeps going, yeah, and then you, you, you keep, keep going. going, then everybody else feels bad for him. Mm-hmm. Because this Muslim crowd says so like, oh, yeah. oh, you, oh, brother, that's not. Yeah, nice. and you don't know who he is. Yeah. No. <laughs> and and I don't know who and he we is. We didn't even start it. And so I'm like destroying some shape <laughs> that I don't even know. <laughs> right? Jake's nephew. I don't know the uniforms. Right. Yet. 
And so I everybody so I else knows who he and is. And I'm like, oh, he's just wearing, yeah. Yeah. And you're like, oh, man, I did a show in New Jersey. And it was at, like, a Shia. I think it was, like, mostly Shia crowd. Mm. And there was a guy up front wearing a big turban. And he was, uh, he was heckling the other comics set. Like, that's not okay. And he was, like, he was, like, saying, he was, like, judging it morally, each joke. (laughs) And, like, don't do that. He loved me, though. But I think I get a discount. Who was that? It's true. Because they don't, the, because, because you you do get a discount, because they don't hold you to the same standards. Like, Muslim, Muslim I'm not a bad Muslim. You should know better. Right. I'm not a bad Muslim. It's fine. Right. If that's how I'm for you. Yeah. But not for him. If you tell a joke and it's like offensive. Yeah. Or you tell a joke about the Quran. Yeah. You know, then if you tell a joke about the Quran, people tense up. Yeah. And even if it's pleasant and like not at all derogatory or anything or offensive, it's just it references the Quran. You got to like. (laughs) Yeah. I I had to be very strategic, very careful with my words. Right. Very. Exp- you know, detail explaining. Right. Whereas yeah. I'm telling a story about how a true story where I got roped into doing a Muslim fundraising. Yeah. And I was quoting the Quran, but like it wasn't real quotes. Right. I was like, <laughs> the Quran says, give money. That's what they say. That's what it says. Great book. Right. You know, and I can say that. And everybody. Because like, everybody oh. laughs, you know, and he does. He's he doesn't know the Quran, right? right? Yeah. And he will though, right? There's like a, that little bit of hope, like hope, <laughs> you know. And and so there's, I get a discount, you know. Different strokes with different folks. Yeah, because they can tell their kids because their kids are there a lot of times. Yeah. And they can tell their kids like, well, he's not, he's, he's not, not Muslim. Muslim. Don't yeah, worry. So about don't worry about it. it. He gets a pass. But you, oh, he, you <laughs> better not. <laughs> and they'll have you ever had people come up and talk to you after the show? I have. I have brother that like, you should not joke about the Quran. I said I never told a joke about the Quran. Yeah. What did I say? I never. I said I told a joke about touch weed, not mm-hmm. the Quran. But this is you know. it is very, very. I don't think like talk about something else. You know? Right. Even when I talked about me being distracted in in prayer and so mm-hmm. on, you know, then but don't brother don't and i was like but did you see the crowd everybody was there right it's just you who was uncomfortable yeah you're the only person who you're didn't the like only it. one yeah the who don't get distracted in your prayer because yeah, you're right? like you know an amazing muslim yeah. you, 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 you never have that problem which prophet muhammad himself is reported he got distracted in uh-huh. his prayer yeah so i would be like you know come on man and we you know there's what, what can you do? You got to just keep going. Have, have you ever had somebody complain about, like, like complain to, like, the organizers or something about you? I like have, something? but not that they didn't come and tell me. Yeah. You know. Yeah, I have. I had, uh, <laughs> there was a thing. I actually had a show get canceled. I was going to do a show in, I think it was New Orleans. Yeah. And it was at some, some Muslim event, and they... Uh, they booked me and we signed a contract and everything and then like three weeks out they contacted me and they were like some uncle in the community some head of the mosque or something looked me up on YouTube yeah. and found like a four year old joke where I was joking about pedophilia uh-huh. and he was like this joke would be inappropriate to tell at a mosque and I'm like I agree what right. do you what do you you think I'm gonna tell that joke at a mosque like, right you know, and but the show, like, he made the show get canceled. Wow. Because I had four years ago told a joke. Wow. And so, and I already got the plane tickets and everything, and so I had to cancel them. And Did they refund it? No. And oh, no, American Airlines refunded it. Oh, wow. So I was, I was okay. Did you keep your deposit? But I... I did not get a deposit. Dang it. That's when we started doing deposits. Right. Because <laughs> I'm like, that's not... You got to do They can't do that. Right. That's not fair. Because, like, early on in my career, yeah. I was... I did a lot more, like, dirty stuff. Yeah. And then I was like, I don't want to do that. And and it wasn't even that dirty. Like, it was, like, barely... It was, like, clever jokes about stuff. I did the same thing. And then I'm like, you know what? I'm... My brand is now clean. You're right. And so I'm going to do that. Yeah. And But somebody pulls up some old thing, and they're like, uh-uh. 
Nope. I mean, if Muslims seen my first stand up. Yeah. Not, I wasn't uh, using profanity. Right. But it definitely wasn't <laughs> halal comedy, mm-hmm. if you will. Um, I was talking about how I got my three kids. Oh, yeah, there you go. In a clean version. <laughs> yeah. Right. And um, the um, subject. They're like, yeah. nope. Yeah, oh man, if they saw that, but I, I'm grateful. You know, back then YouTube wasn't wasn't popular, right? And so I don't have those recordings <laughs> on YouTube. I know, man. I need to take stuff. I don't like my stuff being online. I don't either. I really don't. Because you're constantly evolving. You're always growing. And certain yeah. things, you know, when you're growing, people hold you to something from way back mm-hmm. when, and you'd be like, man, I'm so past that. Why are you bringing yeah. that up? Right. Like. And you got to let people, we were talking about this earlier with, with morality yeah. about being forgiving of people and letting them evolve. Yeah. And there's a tendency, we're talking about like if, if there was somebody in your community that had a really bad past and now they were doing really great. Right. People will talk bad about them. Right. About their bad past. Instead of rejoicing that they're no longer like that. Right. And it's this weird thing. And I, I likened it to finding an old tweet by somebody. <laughs> you, like you dig up an old tweet yeah. by somebody that's racist. Right. And your reaction should be, thank God they don't post racist stuff like that anymore. Right. They moved on. Look, how, <laughs> look how, how, how far they've come. But instead we're like, ah, oh, that's the real them. Got to feel, got to dig up some type of dirt. He can't be that good. Like, yeah. We are really fascinated We're with negativity. Yes. Yeah. We're cynical. We think that anyone who's good, that that's fake. Right. And that there must be some ulterior motive. <laughs> Everybody's it. good, too good to be true. Too good to be true. <laughs> if something's too good to be true, <laughs> it, it probably is. And that's so that's so corrosive. Right. It is. Everybody's suspicious of you. And then when you mess up, they think, I knew it. I knew it. That's it. But no, but they didn't know it. You didn't know it. You created that because yeah. that's what you wanted to happen. It's almost like if your wife is looking through your phone <laughs> to find something and then she finds something that's just an innocent, who is this? Yeah. Who, who's Tracy? And you'd right. be like, oh, that's my friend from high school. She saw me and she just said hi. She, yeah. Why didn't you tell me? You I like, knew it. I didn't. Uh, what? I didn't do anything. I knew you were up to something. <laughs> I was never yeah, up to right. anything. Oh, man. Yeah. Can you put the emoji in there? <laughs> yeah, what's that emoji for? Because I didn't want to say hi. I didn't, want to, I didn't know what to say. I didn't even mean to put the emoji. <laughs> you can tell because it says ha-ha, and then it has the emoji after the ha-ha. <laughs> right. Usually it takes the place of the ha-ha. Right. But you can tell. Right? Yeah. It's so funny. I put shake my head. <laughs> yeah. That's what I put shake my head on the emoji with the hand over the face. Right, yeah, yeah. I was like, yeah, see. What does that mean, though? Yeah, right. That means, like, mm, shame on you. Yeah. Because <laughs> I knew you would go through my phone. Right. It means my hand is over my face because my <laughs> wife's looking. That's what that means, huh? <laughs> this is my nick up. Right. Yeah. <laughs> man. Oh, man. It's good times, though. Cause I, I feel like, you know, honestly, I feel like uh, most comics don't get these type of opportunities to be in front of these crowds right like, they get diverse crowds like mm-hmm. even in, in comedy clubs you know and they're, but they're also going specifically like in a comedy club in a comedy mm-hmm. environment i really truly believe we would kill at a comedy club we do i mean like when i do perform at a comedy club yes it's like I, a lot of times i feel like i've been doing comedy on hard mode yes you know yeah like you go into these places and it's a banquet style. There's people there, and they haven't heard comedy before. They're they're uptight. They're sober, right? Right, because they're Muslim. And then, if you if you learn how to do well, then you go and you perform at a comedy club. And it's like this is easy, right? Like this is man, like man, and it feels great. It feels great, but. But it is hard, <laughs> right? And I'm not gonna lie, it's tough. The other part, the other part <clears throat> of it, like, then the comics at the comedy club hate on us, and we don't get no more time. Yeah, <laughs> That's right. That's what happened. Who are they? Because we're not in the loop. Yeah, like it's we stay too far outside of the you know I me mean, being booked, um, which I'm really truly grateful for mm-hmm. being big booked on all of the private events, mm-hmm. you know, by all of these different Muslim organizations. It kept me out of the comedy clubs mm. and pursuing comedy. That even when I was like, uh, Rami referred me to the improv and I got to do the improv, it was only three people there. 
I was like, this is no fun with it. Yeah, right. You know what I mean? Well, that's what we were talking about earlier with, with wilderness, right? So I have this thing where, like, there was this essay that was written in the late 90s by William Cronin, and it was called The Trouble with Wilderness. And he said the problem with the environmentalist movement was that it was, it was obsessed with wilderness. Mm. This idea of untouched, untouched by man, natural environment. And that concentrating on that idea was keeping them away, keep, keeping them from taking seriously the nature that was around them. Hmm. So you're in New Jersey and you're like, this isn't nature. Right. But it is. Right. Right. It is. Yeah. And I realized that about myself that a lot of times, you know, I'm thinking about comedy clubs and doing shows at comedy clubs. Right. And so the real comedy or the real whatever is always happening somewhere else in my right. head. Right. And everything that I do is, is meaningless. Right. But it's not. Right. That's true. I mean, true. people drive four hours to see us perform. Yeah, that is that is extremely humbling. You know? Like, family will drive four hours to see us perform. And carloads. And they people. love us. And they love us. And, 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 they, and they bring you biryani, too. And they bring us biryani. And I'm like, it's, it's great. And... And then, but then there's that stupid part of me that's like, you know, well, I could be at like a club right now and I do actually really, really, really love what I do. And I love the connections that I make with people. Yeah. I love the conversations that I have and I love the relationships that I've built and like, it's really, I feel very honored and fortunate to be doing it. Right. And it's for a good cause a lot right. of times. We we spent a lot of time today in the car, comparing our you know our religions yes, yeah. and going through like okay for you it's this what is it for this, and one thing that I noticed and I brought up was that like the smart people, in in the religions get along right right like the top people right you know what I mean like the sheikhs right and the bishops <laughs> yep. get along yes right and like the top theologians in Islam and Christianity yeah. teach at the same schools <laughs> and they all hang out every day right right and then but then like and if the religions were incompatible like if we couldn't get along right then you would expect the top people to hate each other like that you would expect the experts in the two religions right, right. to not like each other right but that's not what happens instead they're like yeah okay and i feel like the the, the people on the ground don't know that yeah like because they feel, I feel like even Muslims' responsibility is to convert every Christian or mm -hmm. convert or convert every Christian and hate every Jew. Right. Like, <laughs> like what the heck? Yeah, they, they don't try to convert the Jews. <laughs> they don't. <laughs> <laughs> they immediately no. Nah. No. Nah, be like, nah. where is this coming from? Man? Right. Yeah. I don't know what I don't know where it comes. I think and I like and like the conversion thing. I think like. In a friendly way, yeah. Like I think that's all right. I think that you like you tell people about your faith, and if someone's interested, then you're like, okay. Then you work with them and stuff, right? right. And there's like fair, fair trades, and you know, <laughs> like. But but the, I guess the, the idea that that the two faiths that we can't live together, and publicly. That the, that the right. only way to that the only way to live together is to be private about it. That's true. Uh, that's a big assumption people make. Yeah, I think. But because I think it's kind of real, <laughs> like you know what I mean. Like uh, the mainstream mm -hmm. never sees the coexistence. Right. They never see this friendship. They never mm -hmm. see this the support in the U.S. Love. I think in the U.S. They don't. Yeah. I don't like how you have a joke about uh, India being split into two. <laughs> And you're like, you know who did that? And then you're like, gore, gore, gore. And then you, and then you point at me. Right, that's so bad. And my family's not from England. Right. Right. My family is from Scotland and Ireland. Yeah. Which are taken over by the British. But you're right. like, but you're like, it's Jeremy. <laughs> Jeremy did it. Jeremy split up India and Pakistan. That's true. That's true. It's so bad. <laughs> it's so bad. It's just like I'm the one white person. Yeah, there. The one white person just pick and get right. all of the heat for all of the British. My, like, my favorite thing that happens in this is when you are accidentally racist. Yeah. Right. And where you're black. 
Yeah. And it's great when you're on stage and you're like, do we have any white people here? And then you stop and you're like, sir, you're white. <laughs> and the guy's like, I'm Syrian. Right. And you're like, oh, never mind. <laughs> <laughs> It, it, makes me, it makes me so happy. Right, it happened tonight. Yeah, it happened You were night. like, you're white, and they're yeah. like, I'm Spanish. Yeah. I'm from Spain. But she was white. And you're like, but you're white. <laughs> no, he, listen, she said, originally? Yeah, what do you mean by... I was like... Yeah, but what did she mean by originally? Exactly. Did she mean that she Her was ancestors. born in Spain? Or just like she has a great 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 grandmother who's from Spain. She had a great 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 grandmother that was from Spain. Yeah, and I was like, look at this. And then her she ancestors ran- were from Spain and helped kick out the Muslims. Right. <laughs> and then she and converted then making, to Islam. And then she converted to Islam. And married a Pakistani. It, married a Pakistani. And, and, and put she, on a dupatta. And she's and put on a dupatta, and she's helping with the, she's helping with the reconquista <laughs> of America. Yeah. Right. They're gonna reconquista. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, the Muslims are, are conquisting America. <laughs> so true. And uh, by moving to these small towns, yeah, in these suburbs, that's and then, true. Yeah, that's what's happening. <laughs> it does. It did. It did backfire on me. <laughs> like, douche. Oh, like, oh, snap. I love it though. Yeah, it happens, man. I, I, it's my little way. Uh, my intention behind it is to play a little trickery, uh-huh. right? To appear to come off as like the white man right, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then reel them in like uh-huh. I was like that that is, it doesn't always work right <laughs> and then reel them in like oh to give them a compliment because one of the things too that when well, I well but you forgot to do that tonight. I did I did you, you did we, <laughs> we both did this tonight we did we were telling jokes and we would tell the first 10 seconds of a joke yeah and then we'd be like so anyway and then we move on to the next joke and not do so you you did the like are there any white people here are there any white Muslims here you know and then you forgot to do we need more white Muslim valley girls yeah you forgot to do Donald Trump being Muslim I forgot all of that you forgot to do uh and do do your Donald Trump I, like for the people at home. There's no collusion. Yeah. There's no collusion in the religion of Islam. <laughs> <laughs> I said it. It's, good. it's amazing. It's amazing. Jeremy is doing a great job. He's he's using his passion, <laughs> right? He's working with the people. <laughs> you know? They come for him. They come for Jeremy. They come from the mountains. <laughs> they come from all like types of valleys. Right. It's <laughs> <That's> great, man. <laughs> and. Uh, it's not- but you forgot to do that. You forgot to do Donald forgot. Trump being Muslim. I did. You forgot to do all that. And so you were just like, are there any white Muslims here? You? All right. <laughs> moving on. <laughs> and it made me so happy. I'm That's not- the thing that, that comedians love. Yeah. Comedians love watching other comedians mess up. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's something that makes us really happy. But we only like when we see them mess up because we know the, the, you the know, right way. Yeah. We know the correct way. We've seen yeah. them perform enough. We have that kind of bond. Yeah, you, you don't know. you don't like it when they bomb. No, when they're like making the crowd uncomfortable or anything. But you do right. like it when you like, yeah. when you know how a joke goes. Especially when you don't like that joke. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> like, I can't stand that. Yeah, joke. you're like, oh, yeah. that's what you get, Omar. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> There's some joke. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> that's just how it goes. Mm. And that's good because you gotta have that, you know. Be every I think that's what's wrong with people in the world today. Like they like you gotta like everything the other person. You, you can't have no love for them. You can't yeah, have right. no, you know. What I mean, you can't. You gotta agree with everything or disagree with everything. Yeah. You know, it's like, dude, you could, you could. Everybody is everybody. You like even but your I own think, family. I think, and I've said this before on the podcast. I think, but that our bonds as people now are so weak and so easy to move on yeah so like if if i never wanted to see you again or talk to you again i could probably do it right right right. like if i got mad at you for something right and so there's that fear Mm. that um and and you're kind of walking on eggshells sometimes around people especially people who are like really easily like easy to make mad right then you're like "Ah, if i say the wrong thing maybe they'll never want to see me again right whereas back in the day you might hate somebody but you still saw them every day right you know they're in your village or whatever you gotta get over it yeah you gotta get over it you gotta like you know repair that relationship and 
like you have a brother or something and you see him every day, you talk to him every day. Right. And, but if you don't, then there's that, you don't have that trust. You just unfollow him in real life. Yeah. For, for real. For real. And never see him <laughs> unfollow again. Unfollow you. And so your standards go up. It's true. Where you're like, well, I got to like everything they do. Or I got to, if you don't have a bond with somebody, then like the closer the bond you have, the more relaxed you are about not liking something about them. Right. You know, like they have a joke that you hate and you're like, I hate that joke. Right. And you, and you don't think like, if I tell them that I hate that joke, then he's not going to like me anymore. Right. It doesn't cross your mind. You're just like, I hate that joke. I hate that joke. And it never occurs to you that maybe you won't see him again. You're like, of course mm-hmm. we'll see each other again. Right. You know? No, it's true. It's true. Anyway. I hate all your jokes. Right. <laughs> 100%. 100% of your jokes. I was jokes. talking to a comic friend, Musa, and I was like, yo, Lou, he got some good stuff, man. You got to hear it. Because he was like, how is how that? I was like, I'm on the tour. He was like, Jeremy. I was like, no, he's got some good stuff, man. You got to hear it. I said, he's one of those comics that's clever, the way that he, uh, yeah, yeah. That, you know, he writes his jokes. Well, that's it, the thing, is that turns. I was always clever, mm. but I wasn't funny. Right, I was just mean. <laughs> For most of my life, I was just this mean just person. Cynical. <laughs> mean person, very cynical, right. very politically passionate, and passionate about religion and issues yeah. and stuff. And I was just that guy at the party who would just ruin your time. Because I'm like, I want to fight. Right. I want to argue right. about something. Let's debate. I'm going to, exactly, <laughs> let's debate. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to memorize a bunch of stuff before I come to the party. <laughs> And I'm just unloaded on everybody. I was terrible to be around. Then you start hanging with the great debaters, these Muslims. <laughs> yeah, right. Uh, yeah. They, they love Dawa. debate. Like, what? Yeah. <laughs> they love a good conversation. Come, come. What do you say? What do you say? They're all trying to practice Dawa. On right. Me, right. And they're all at they're all at Dawa 101. Right. And it's all stuff I, like I've heard this so right. many times. Like, dude, say something. Do you really else. do you really think I haven't heard of it? I haven't heard this yet. Right. You know, come on. Yes. Yes. Right. You haven't heard it. Right. <laughs> How can Jesus be God if he was praying to God? And I'm like, all right, you really think can I haven't do heard better. Can you do better? Can you do better than that, please? Is that all you got? You it's know? like, like yeah, that's your jab? <laughs> yeah, that's, your, that's, your, that's what you're doing. <laughs> and that's, that's so, like, but yeah, that happens. And, but I, that's, that's what I was like. I was like, you know, I was doing dawah on everybody about politics, right? <laughs> and I was like, I was not fun to be around. Yeah. And so I was like, I need to find a creative outlet and so I had friends who were comedians and they were like you should try stand up comedy and so I started open mics and so I just started pouring all of my passion and cleverness yeah. into these jokes and joke structure how was it when you first when you uh, uh, that was back when I was still drinking okay so I had that as a help I got you I <laughs> where got I would you. get drunk go on stage and yeah. do a bunch of stuff but I would write all the time and back then I kind of miss it because mm. back then when I first started Nobody knew who I was. Right. And I wasn't famous at all. And I was just throwing stuff to the wall and seeing if it stuck. Right. So I was writing in every possible genre of comedy you can think of. I was writing just cr- the craziest, most creative stuff ever. Like you would have thought I was on meth or something. Right. Just just throwing everything around. And going back and looking, I'm like, man, a lot of that was garbage. Like, it was just not good. But there was some stuff in there that's like, right. okay. Yeah. You know? You can build off of I it. I can build off of that. Yeah. And, but there was that freedom that came with nobody mm. knowing. Right? Like, that it was stuff that was going to be forgotten tomorrow. Yeah. Nobody's going to hold me to this. Right. Right? And I missed that. And, yeah. I, and, I, and I can never get it back. That's true. Because... I can't write just crazy stuff right? and then do it on stage and then people be like, what is this? Like, what is he, right. what is he, and I, don't, and I don't think that's resistance. I don't think that's me. No, I, don't, I think that's evolving. Cause I think that's goes, evolving right. where I'm like, I have a brand you a, now. You got a brand, you got a purpose. Yeah. You know what you're doing, why you're doing right. it. Right. I, and then you I have, have a this. Jeremy voice. Yeah, yeah, right? yeah. Right. I have a Jeremy, I have Jeremy jokes, jokes yeah. that are like classic Jeremy right you know and I can't go back and just do like chaotic Game of Thrones stories <laughs> that are just like you know right. like I mean I would love to right there's part of me that's like misses that but like 
it would not be good. Just it's just a release, like oh yeah, right. Not necessary. Well, I thought like you know disguise myself, yeah, and go go <laughs> go do open mics, right? Right, like we're here, we're near Boston, right? Let's go do open mics and just do a bunch of material that oh, we don't man. even like. Nobody would know. Nobody would know. As who long we as are. they don't have their phones. Yeah, as long as they don't have their phones <laughs> out and they film me, right? And they're like, "Why is Jeremy doing a bunch of?" Like what's he doing? Why is he doing a white supremacist character? Right. Or something, right? right. Like some <laughs> they man. Something that, like that. We wouldn't be able to be back on tour yeah, next right? year. <laughs> uh, yeah. It's funny, man. That is funny. I mean Yeah. I do miss the the early the early years. Like the early I mean I'm still I've been doing this five years, right? Yeah. But but, but I'm still like I miss that early just chaos. Yeah. Of just like when you first find it, because the environment of a comedy club is also chaotic. Yes, because you also meet other comics who are throwing stuff at yeah, the wall. Yeah, and they're doing crazy and stuff they're too, doing like crazy stuff. And you have this, and, and you have like a spirit of forgiveness. Yeah, where they'll they'll just bomb. You're, and then you're like, next time, yeah. right? And you're not going to hold them to that. Right. That's one thing that I I always wonder when comics. Like their sets go viral, like at an open mic, mm. or like from an open mic, and I mean, we, we, I guess we touched on this earlier, but like there's a comedian who like, and they'll get like called out for it, and you're like, okay, but that was like the first version of that joke, right? So, like, you gotta let people keep keep, keep going, keep going, yeah, dude. I'm telling you, I had that experience, man. Like, I from my first experience doing comedy. I was in Detroit, mm-hmm. right? my hometown. It was a black comedy club, mm-hmm. which is a whole different environment. They're vicious. <laughs> Very vicious. <laughs> I'll tell you, the guy, as soon as they called me out, I was doing an average night, open mic, uh-huh. and the dude stood up and was like, you better be funny, mother. Bloop, bloop. <laughs> and so then I was like, oh, wow, I didn't know this happened. Yeah. And then I froze. He scared me. Uh-huh. And then they started shaking oh, keys. Oh, yeah, yeah. And the DJ was like, get, 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 get out of here. Get, 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 get out of here. <laughs> and I went in I hid in the back. And I, to this day, I do not know what possessed me to do the same thing mm-hmm. the very next week. Mm-hmm. I went back up the very next week and froze again. <laughs> oh, man. Like, get, 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 get out of here. I started trying to do my... Yes, it happened to me. I started trying to do my Chris Tucker to save me. <laughs> like, like, man, you know what, man? It was like, man, you ain't no Chris Tucker. Man, get the heck off the stage. I was like, oh, dude. <laughs> oh, it was gosh. like, it was like what you said in the car. They are like, they sense, they can smell the fear off of yeah, you. Yeah, for sure. As a, as a, um, as a comic and then one comedian he passed away bless his heart um and his name was big daddy fitz he told me say you starting out too big it's 350 people out there man yeah. you gotta go to a smaller club and the only my first laugh was the guy said uh we walked into this comedy club I, first of all i quit after, mm-hmm. after that second time i was like yeah this is you know this is not for me you got 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 out of there yeah i got out of there i was like i'm not doing that again comedy's not my thing and so then i was with these friends of mine and we went to a comedy club and the guy wasn't funny right Mm. and it was his comedy club right and everybody was just like he was just up there nobody was laughing and my friends were like we got a comedian right here i was like no 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 don't do that don't tell them right and they said oh hey we because he was on the mic we got a comedian now i'm i'm fronted in front of my friends to go up on the stage and then the only thing that i could say i was like i just got to be honest so what i went up on stage and i was like listen guys i'm not a comedian i just needed somebody to talk to (laughs) <laughs> and, and that was my yeah. first laugh. That's good. And then I didn't know what to say from mm-hmm. there on out. So I just started messing with people. And you make that chicken look good because they were eating. And, uh-huh. uh, and then I was like, all right, man. And then I got off stage while it was good. Yeah, right. On and then people were like, oh, man, that there was you go. great. That was great. And it was like, told you, man, you funny as hell. And I was like, <sighs> I was like, yeah, that'll that carry my first you. laugh. Yeah. That'll carry you. And I feel, I mean, I am only as like, and, and I don't know. I don't think this is healthy of me, but my entire view of myself, yeah, is my last show. Mm. So, however, my last show went, that's <laughs> no. how I view myself. No, it is no. like I mean, not I'm exaggerating. I don't but, know. I but, know. But, but 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 it is very he- like heavily influenced. Where because if I do well, 
Like, I'm in a good mood until my next because show. Because what we just say, your last shows and on this tour so far, is that Houston show. And no matter what show we did after that, we always go back to Houston. Right. But the shows have been good. People have been laughing at the right times. Yeah. And I, I, I'm talking about bombing, mm. right? If I bomb yeah. where no one is, is, is liking it, you know? Right. Or there's something happens in the show where someone gets mad and, like, I screw up. Right. You know? Then I am in a funk until I get back on stage. No, that's true. I understand exactly what you're saying. And and it sucks when it's like I got two weeks till, until my next like paid gig, yeah. and I'm like I gotta go, I gotta find a stage. I, find I need a stage. To, I need to find an open mic in the area where I am and go do it. And it doesn't work for me like that. Go Smurf, like yeah. you know what Smurfing is. Uh uh-uh. It's where you it's just those little blue things. Yeah, those little yeah. blue things. But like I guess it, it comes from like a computer programming thing, but. Smurfing is when you, uh, like, a professional pool player will go to, like, some pool hall and challenge somebody to to pool and pretend to not be good at it. And then do, like, oh, and they, like, crush them, right? okay, okay, And so okay, for okay. us, it would be going to an open mic oh, and, being like, and being like, I don't, I don't think I've ever done yeah, this man, before. Yeah, man, never You know? <laughs> like, and, <clears throat> and, like, you, you can go online, look up Smurfing, and there's, like, Eminem going to, like, a karaoke night and doing him, doing Eminem, oh, you know, wow. stuff like that, oh, right? Oh, I didn't know that. And, uh, and it's fun, right? Yeah, yeah, so that you, is you, fun. You're, you're in a place you don't know, you look up open mics in the area, you yeah. go and, and you do it, and you're like, well, I don't know, yeah. like, funny. this is my second time on stage, right? right? <laughs> and then you, and then you, what's funny is when you're like, this is my first time on stage, and then you pull out your best stuff, and it doesn't do well. Oh, man. <laughs> and then you're like, never mind. All right. right. Now I got a month before I'm going to be happy again. Listen, look, yours is a little different than mine. Like you said, you got to go to any stage. Mine's, I have to go back to that same stage. Oh, yeah. So I held on to this thing for a little over a year. Mm. In Seattle, I didn't have a good show. Okay. Right? I was booked. I forgot which organization. And so you're not going to be happy until you get back to Seattle. Man. But I got a chance to go back. It was redemption for me. Mm. And I, I killed it. I redeemed myself, right? I was so happy, right? Even though I never want to go back now. Right. <laughs> because I don't like the venue. Mm. If I get an invite to go back to that place, I don't care if they mm. was like $10,000. I'm not going. Yeah. Because it's one of those places where... I'll do it. Give them my name. I will. Give right? my name. I'll take audience the audience is too far back. Tell them I'll do it for nothing. You know, right? <laughs> that works. Yeah. 850 Eight fifty no. for, for eight thousand five hundred just for, for for reparations. Right, right. right. Why not? And uh, it's like I don't like it. Right. So, but I was happy to go back, and I was happy to redeem myself. And then uh, it's like that stage is where I have to go back to. But mm. as you're right, it just eats at you. To go you. back and vanquish the dragon. Yes, it just eats at you. Like, but my whole like my career in comedy had been interesting because I I didn't know how to write. Mm. So there's a this guy is famous. He's on this like fourth Netflix special named Joe Coy. He like he we were in Vegas together, and he just kept putting me on his shows. And Bless you kept bombing. You said. I kept bombing, but he would put me on shows to open up. Listen, it was Honest John, it was Pierre, you know, all these veteran comics, uh-huh. right? Jeff Brown, Michael Blackson, right? These were all of his friends, and they were all like, you know, I mean, like where we are. Now they mm-hmm. were then they weren't mm-hmm. famous they weren't big but they were known right, right? they were because known they, they were did. doing good yeah they were doing okay and man I would just bomb every time in which I became their opening joke oh that's <laughs> oh, so, it's just so bad so you would go first and then right. everyone after first, that would mention you and would mention me oh that's great oh man and so he would he I just let him down so much man yeah he'd be like what the heck Omar, why do you do this? And like after the fourth time, he cut me loose, mm-hmm. and that was it. You know, and now I look up for him. I was like, "Well, I'm so proud of him." Yeah, like I don't, he doesn't know what I'm doing today. <laughs> <laughs> I have a theory, though. I think that every like you ever play role playing games where you're playing and you're like an elf or you're like a barbarian or something, and like they all have stats, right? So like the barbarian has like strength, but he's slow. And has heavy armor or something, right? And then you can select the elf who's fast and dexterous but has no armor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And not very strong, you know? And I feel like every comedian starts out with one stat that's strong. Mm. And then they need to build up the rest. 
So, for example, for me, writing was maxed out okay. when, I, when I first started. I'm, okay. a good, I'm a good writer. Right. And I'm good at writing. I'm good at thinking. And, but I did not know how to talk. I did not know how to talk to people who were in the audience. Right. I didn't know how to... I, w- I would just... It was very monotone. Mm-hmm. I would just kind of recite from my brain what was what I had written in my head. Right, right, right. And it was decent. And then I was like, oh, I got to talk like I'm like I'm, I'm a person. Right. You know? <laughs> and then, oh, I need to walk around on stage. Oh, I need to kind of block this and right. like, you know, act it out a little bit. And, uh, okay, I need to have higher energy a little bit. You know? Right. And I need to have... Like high energy jokes and low energy jokes, right? right. You know, so it kind of flows. The delivery, a bit. yeah. And uh, other comedians are great at crowd work, but they don't know how to write, right? Or they don't know how to, <clears throat> you know, do anything else, right? And then other comedians are, you know, re- are really you. good at the at the business part of it, right. the hype, right? And the getting people in the seats, M- and then they show up, and, and then they show up, and they're not good at all, <laughs> right? And that's always a fear, you know. Yeah. Like, oh man, I hope I, I hope I put out like good stuff. Like, I was that guy where my I was I wasn't afraid of audience. I wasn't mm-hmm. afraid of the crowd because I'm a people's person. I didn't know how to write. Yeah. So when I get up there, I, I mean, <laughs> I didn't know what to say. Uh-huh. I don't know what to talk about. Like you're charismatic, but you right. don't have anything. I didn't have anything. Yeah. I was like, what do I say? It wasn't until I was in, uh, I did this um, co- comedic workshop in Los Angeles after I lost my friend. Right. Mm-hmm. And then uh, she, I was first, it felt, it felt like a wax on, wax off. And she was like, okay, after it's like six, it's six classes, right? And then you would perform at a comedy club. And, and film so, it, she, you'd have the film of it. Yeah. 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 So she says, uh, stand up, talk about yourself. <laughs> That's how she was. Her name was Charlene Lockhart, right? Talk about yourself. And then I was like, well, I'm from Detroit. That's funny. Put that down. <laughs> she would do that I was like I'm a single dad I got three kids that's funny put that down mm-hmm. what's it like with being with you a single dad with your kids that's good right and so then I was like well I mean like what's some of the challenges I said one of the challenges like going to the grocery store and I'm trying to tell them like look only look for the sale like I had to teach the kids to only look for the sale because I don't want to be the guy at the checkout counter saying could you put this back because mm-hmm. I only had so much money I said I'll write that story down write that story down and so then I was like, she's not, te- she's not teaching me anything. Yeah. But she was telling me how I talk about myself and my experiences right. to be able to put it inside uh-huh. of a story, which is what I didn't have. Yeah. So then at the end of the six weeks, when and, I, and because you I don't have the, it, you don't value it yet. Right. And then you start to get it, and you're like, oh, that oh, matters a lot. That matters. Like I can tell this story. But after that, man, I hit the ground running. Yeah. You know, I got scouted for VH1. I was at the comedy store. I was uh-huh. like, Richard Pryor was here. And then it just took me. Like, And then I uh, I, went to, I was like, they wanted me to be dirty. Like, mm-hmm. I was like, it's not, wasn't, I was finding out who I was. But I got this manager and it was like, you got to be dirty, baby. I can get your own Comedy Central special. And they were like selling me all these ideas. Now it's different. Now it's like, true. I mean, right? you should... I mean, if any comedians are listening, like you should start out working clean. Yeah. Because you got to build those muscles. Yeah. And you got to learn how to write and learn how to do material and stuff, and not rely on that. That's my philosophy. No, that's true. Now, and this guy that got me started, Dusty Slay, he works clean. Yeah. And he and he's great, and he's a really good joke writer. But he was always like, and we like dirty jokes, right? But <laughs> we were like, you got to learn how to write clean right and you guys start out like that where you're learning how to write jokes yeah and just learn the structure of a joke and if you don't learn the structure of it then you're not going to be able to um to like to go very far right um and also like if you work clean you can do corporate stuff yeah you 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 do these everywhere you 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 can go everywhere and you can do clubs like people don't care they don't care they're not there like i wish he was dirty or no one ever says that right they only say that if you're terrible, <laughs> but if you're clean and good, then the, no one notices that you're no dirty. That, that, that you're clean. It's true. 
Anyway, man, thank you so much for coming on this show. No, man, thank this you, has gone man. by really fast. <laughs> has you know? it? It's gone. It's over now. Yeah, it's like we're at an hour and fifteen minutes. <laughs> it doesn't feel like it that. doesn't feel like that. This is this is how our drive was for six hours. I know. That's why we got a ticket. Well, that's right. Yeah. When we did, yeah, get a ticket, half, yeah, no. halfway through this, <laughs> imagine a cop pulling me over, and he was racist. <laughs> I think that's how I'm going with that. He would. He, he was racist, and he stopped me because you were in the car. See, and he was like, "White people and black people." Actually, he was like Christians and Muslims. He spotted he us. He spotted it. He knew it. He was like, "This is obviously a white Catholic <laughs> and with a, with a, a black, black Muslim. Muslim, and <laughs> obviously from Sudan. Obviously, <laughs> right? And and I gotta I gotta I gotta pull him over, right? And." <laughs> Definitely, right. he's definitely in one of these countries that we we banned. Right, <laughs> we had the Muslim ban on. That's right. <laughs> anyway, man, thank you so much. No, and, thanks for having uh, me. We man. got a little bit more the of the Holy tour. Wars. Let's keep it going. Yeah. The Holy Wars, is Jeremy McClellan. That's man. right. Um, we, we got some more of this tour. But, yeah. Uh, anyway, man, I'll, I'll see you uh, next weekend. I think. Yeah, or weekend after next. Yeah, weekend after next. That's yeah, right. yeah, yeah. In uh, I think in we got Columbus. Yeah, Columbus. And then Tyler, Texas. Wherever that is. Which is Dallas. <laughs> One of those little it's Dallas. Pockets, right. right, it's Dallas. It's it's like, right. <laughs> yeah. the sub, whatever suburb of Dallas the Muslims, yeah. the, the uncle moved to. And then we're somewhere in... Uh, Tyler, and then San and Francisco. Somewhere in the Bay. Is it San Francisco mm-hmm. or is it Oakland? It's San Francisco. Okay. And then I fly from San Francisco straight shot to Dubai. Nice. Where nice. I'm doing that show. I'm for flying the, straight to... South uh, Africa, right? Yeah, South Africa, Johannesburg. Johannesburg. Yeah. yeah, I've never been there. Yeah, man. Yeah. When we'll go. I think it was it was it was it was nicer for white people maybe a little while ago. But now <laughs> yeah. back in the you know, back in the good old days. Yeah. <laughs> we'd be like, hey, back. <laughs> yeah, right. So uh but no, I'd love to go to South Africa. Yeah, but, uh, no, you'll have fun. Man. Yeah. So all right man, thanks a lot. All right, for sure. Yeah, take it easy. <laughs> And that concludes another episode of Holy Wars. Thank you so much for listening, and don't forget to subscribe, share it on social media, rate it five stars on iTunes, donate to the Patreon. Every little bit helps this project keep moving forward. Until next time, I'm Jeremy McClellan. Thank you for listening.